Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Fidel. This will be a presentation on mood disorders. I'm going to start off with three quotes. We think, but we are not our thoughts. Empty your mind and listen to your heart. Accept the here and now. We'll come back to those quotes at the end of the lecture. Mood disorders, a comparison between modern mental health science and my personal case study of practicing heart-centered spiritual teachings to liberate myself from thought identification as the cause of my mental suffering. Mood disorders comparison presentation overview. I will have the modern mental health on the left side and heart-centered spiritual teachings on the right side. We'll go over the background case study of myself, these heart-centered spiritual teachings, key definitions of self, no self, mood disorders, and no mood disorders, etiology, diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis. Background case study, JF, myself, is currently 45-year-old male, unmedicated for the past two years, in good mental and physical health. At the age of 22, when I began medical school, I had inner conflicts since I didn't want to be a doctor. So when I was going through medical school, I had thoughts that I couldn't make it through medical school, which eventually progressed into hopelessness thoughts and even thoughts of suicide, which impaired my ability to function in medical school enough that I went to the psychiatrist and received an initial diagnosis of depression, and I was medicated with Paxil. At the age of 30, when I was taking my radiology board examination, these thoughts became more prevalent since now I was going to finish my training and start my job as being a doctor, and I still didn't want to be a doctor. So what I had done at this time was exchange my thoughts of worthlessness into thoughts of happiness, and even I was able to shut off my thinking mind, which heightened my senses. My mind was locked in these two state, states of happiness or manicness, and I presented to the psychiatrist, and I was diagnosed with bipolar type 1, and I was placed on Risperdal, Depakote, Lamictal, and Paxil. The Risperdal was withdrawn after the initial three months when some of my more unusual thinking subsided, and I was maintained on the remaining medications until the age of 43. At the age of 43, when I lost my marriage, my pet dog died, and I left my job, I also discarded all my bipolar medications. At this time, I had happy thoughts because I was no longer doing this job anymore as a doctor and I was no longer being medicated. However, I had a perception that no one around me was in agreement with this decision I made. So I went into thoughts of being angry because... I thought that I was being true to myself, however, I perceived no one else was in agreement with this, so I went into isolation. I eventually developed thoughts that I interpreted as voices coming from God, and even visual thoughts or hallucinations of clouds forming on the horizon. Eventually progressed to even suicidal thoughts. At the same time, I was practicing the spiritual teachings of Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching and Hao Hu Xing. And it was these teachings that enabled me to trust in an inner voice that was coming from my heart. So when the thoughts of suicide came to a crescendo, this other voice was telling me not to take my life. So here are Lao Tzu's heart-centered spiritual teachings from 4th century B.C., the two particular voices that pertain to the voice from our heart is as follows from the Tao Te Ching, verse 70. My teachings are easy to understand and easy to put into practice, yet your intellect will never grasp them, and if you try to practice them, you'll fail. My teachings are older than the world. How can you grasp their meaning? If you want to know me, look inside your heart. And the second from the Hao Hu Xing, verse 17, which was particularly important to me since I never believed in organized religion, do not go about worshiping deities and religious institutions as a source of the subtle truth. To do so is to place intermediaries between yourself and the divine and to make of yourself a beggar who looks outside for a treasure that is hidden inside his own breast. 
If you want to worship the Tao, first discover it in your own heart. Then your worship will be meaningful. Now for some key definitions of the self and the no-self. In modern mental health, we have the self. Your self is the totality of you, including your body, your sense of identity, your reputation, how others know you, and so on. It encompasses both the physical self and the self that is constructed out of meaning. The individual's belief about himself or herself, including the person's attributes, and who and what the self is. That self-definition is from Roy F. Baumeister, a social psychologist known for his work on the self. In heart-centered spirituality, we have the no-self. The no-self is not a denial of existence. The no-self is unnameable and unknowable, since there is no reciprocity between your thoughts of body and your beliefs with your intrinsic essence. We are not our thoughts since thoughts do not recreate us. Thoughts also create an illusory boundary between a self and a universe. An analogy is the self is to the universe like the wave is to the ocean. There is clearly no separation between the two. What we are left with is present moment awareness. Definitions, mood disorder versus no mood disorder. From the American Heritage Medical Dictionary, mood disorder, any of a group of psychiatric disorders, including depression and bipolar disorder, characterized by a pervasive disturbance of mood. In heart-centered spirituality, there is no mood disorder assigned since there is no outside observer to assign it. Etiology of mood disorder. Modern mental health, we have the scientific method applied to individuals and or populations to study mood disorders. We could look at family environment and genetics. We could see if there's patterns in who develops depression or bipolar by looking at identical twins or genes between populations. Can we find patterns? Are there common stressors? Are there common neurotransmitter levels that we can see? People with mania have higher levels of serotonin. People with depression, lower levels of serotonin. Hormonal changes, the HPA axis. People that are depressed or adrenally fatigued. Psychoneuroimmunology. We could look at different immune function levels in pe people that are depressed or manic. Can we find a pattern? Brain mapping. Are, more, are, are regions of the brain more active during a state of depression or mania? Can we find the cause and effect of these mood disorders? Heart-centered spirituality, again, it's up to the person. In my case, it's bringing subconscious to conscious. I became aware repetitive thought patterns had developed to avoid re-experiencing unpleasant sensations within my being. An example a thought pattern, I'll never get hurt again, to avoid re-experiencing the feeling of heartbreak. This is intellectualization or thinking to avoid feeling, popularized by Sigmund Freud. Here is an example of functional brain mapping. This is a PET scan that shows brain energy consumption, how it's different in depressed states, lower, and manic states, higher. Diagnosis of mood disorder, modern mental health. The diagnosis is made when the thoughts and behaviors are reported by the patient and or observed by the mental health professional. And then the mental health professional utilizes these symptomatic criteria outlined by the DSM to assign a mood disorder diagnosis. In heart-centered spirituality, again, it's the person themselves that comes to this realization. So in my case, it's the awakening when my marriage was lost and my pet dog was lost and I left my job. This isolation awakened my inner conflict between who I thought I should be and who I truly was. It was at this point that I discarded my bipolar medications since I became aware that these medications were masking the underlying fear I had of being my true loving self. Treatment mood disorder. In modern mental health, we have cognitive behavior therapy, medications, support groups, counseling, behavior modifications, more active treatment such as electroconvulsive therapy, transcranial magnetic stimulation. In heart-centered spirituality, 
The treatment is disciplined inner work. First and foremost, in my case, it's listening to my inner voice, the voice from my heart, which I learned very well from the teachings of Lao Tzu. Presence and acceptance, to accept each moment of life as it is. Feeling, to allow myself to feel once again. Non-attachment, allowing thoughts to come and go. Even including even identity thoughts. Jeffrey, Fidel, these thoughts have nothing to do with my intrinsic identity. They're assigned names given to me by my parents that I came to my know myself as, but those don't define who I am. Non-reaction. The being or my body no longer reacts in an unhealthy way to thoughts. So after a particular situation, it's up to me whether I want to carry those thoughts around and continue to get mad in an event that happened two days ago. Forgiveness. Same concept. It's to let go of mental perceptions of having been wronged by another person or having wronged another person. Honesty. With more honesty, there's less inner conflict. Humility. The only thing that was creating a boundary between myself and the outside were my thoughts. So once I quieted my mind, I realized that this was a mental boundary. So this is the return to oneness of non-duality. And that's like the wave rediscovering that it was the always the ocean, just like the self rediscovering that it was always the universe. And love is our original innocent state that we all start off as. The prognosis for mood disorder and modern mental health, the prognosis is strongly correlated with the patient's thoughts, regardless of the outside environment. So suicidal thoughts are dangerous, even in a quiet room, that those thoughts overtake the person and become their complete reality. An action may be taken. The patient may actually take their life based just upon thought processes. Continu continued therapy correlates with the patient's vocalized thoughts and reported observed behaviors to the mental health professional. In heart-centered spirituality, the prognosis is the complete uh, liberation from thought-based identity. So suicidal thoughts may still occur, but they're no longer dangerous because thoughts come and go like any other phenomenon in the mind. So thought becomes an intelligence or like another sense completely unrelated to one's identity. The moods become congruent with the outside situation and life continues in acceptance of the present moment. Now to revisit these quotes, we think but we are not our thoughts. In other words, we all have the ability to think, we evolve the ability to think, but we are not defined by our thoughts. In this way, we're all the same, regardless of what thoughts or belief systems we acquired. Behind those thoughts is our intrinsic being or essence that we all have in common. Empty your mind and listen to your heart. That's listening to our inner voice. The more we hold on to our belief systems, the less we allow room for this new information to, to learn from that comes from within us. And accept the here and now is just to accept each moment of life, this present moment of life, as it is. For more information, please visit my website, www.jeffreyfidelmd.com. Thank you.